Their migration, some herds have been spotted numbering in the tens of thousands. You get all of their water from the vegetation that they eat. Another uh, thing about them is they love standing in front of trucks. So I'm really happy that they're that far away. Stabilizes them when they're running. Yep, another one coming up. Helps them make better turns. Now, take a look at the face. There's these teardrop looking marks under their eyes. That helps them with the glare from the sun. It's kind of like the tape that some athletes use under their eyes. Probably get another great look at the giraffes here. The giraffe. You see the little baby in the middle of the herd? So they're a group, it's called a tower. That's another problem. Oh, that neck, they're so famous here. Actually has the same number of vertebrae your neck does. Which is seven. In case you didn't know. If you haven't seen the baby, it's... Start from the left, it's the second one over. Guessing by that one size, it can't be more than a few months old. They're born at six feet tall. It looks to be about seven. This road loops around. We'll probably get another great look at the giraffes here in a couple of minutes. Their other name comes from. Oh, these red pillars. Probably going to start seeing these everywhere. animals up in that field. The adorable little antelope you see sprinkled all about. We've seen a few already. Those are spring bucks. And that's as big as they get. They're only three feet tall. However, they can jump 13 feet in the air and run up to 60 miles an hour. Almost outrun your car and jump. <laughs> With the spring buck, there's a smaller herd of white-bearded wildebeest. It's one of the, the best migrators giraffe. in Africa. They can travel up to a thousand miles every year. I say smaller herd, even though there seems to be a lot, because in the wild, the herd can have numbers in the hundreds of thousands. They discovered that these massive elephants, there's a couple right next to us. They're terrified of bees. <laughs> they won't go anywhere near bees if they can hear them buzzing or see them. So farmers just put beehives all around the farm. Kind of like a fence. Might sound silly. It is simple, but it works. It keeps the elephants out successfully. Oh, the baby! Oh, little baby elephant just ran out. <laughs> now, by her size, she can't be more than a few weeks old. Oh, going back to mom. Okay. <laughs> we were scary. Oh, we're hiding. All right. Oh, no, it's not mom. Mom's the one in the back. Maybe that's a sibling. Now, she looks tiny, but she's still about 400 pounds. It's a big baby. And you have to have a lot of respect for mom elephant. She's pregnant for almost two years. Oh, well, this one's showing off the trunk a little bit. There's a hundred thousand muscles in just the trunk. They can do a lot with it. Thirsty. It's the largest species and lightest shade of pink. They turn that color from all the beta carotene that's in the shrimp seed. That's why babies are hatched gray. It takes about a year and a half to get to that color. Oh, the smaller birds with them, those aren't their babies. Those are just local freeloaders, basically. <laughs> a group's called a flamboyance. Might be my favorite group term if I had to pick one. 
the stripes, believe it or not, are a form of camouflage. Obviously not with their surroundings, but with each other. When they're running in a big herd, it's really hard for a predator to tell where one ends and the other begins. Oh yeah, there's two more. Those zebra stripes are completely unique to each and every zebra. Kind of like your fingerprints, are to you, no two are the same, it goes to about 35 feet. Their hearing's great though, they know we're here, they just don't care. Uh, those brown antelope or Bantabak, they're actually extinct in the wild, only living in reserves like this one. Those big eggs on the right are ostrich eggs, largest living eggs, about three pounds each. Of course, that follows with the largest living bird. What's the, the challenger? We can tell these are all female, not just because there's feathers, or because they're in eggs, but because of their feathers. They're gray. The males have black. And they're about seven feet tall. A male's closer to nine. Wow. Back a little further behind the ostrich, those are attics. Their coats change a bit with the seasons. Right now they've got that brown and white mix going on. In the summer, pure white, like ghostly white. The hell got Glen. It's a peaceful little area. Lots of animals can just rest and relax here. On your left, these are scimitar or oryxes. Very impressive creatures. They go about 10 months without drinking water. They're able to do that because their body temperature goes a lot higher than ours. We rest at 98.6, right? They can rest at 115. Any moisture they need, they can just get from food they eat, which as you're seeing is grass, hay, things like that. It's not very hydrating, but it's enough for them. White size of a black rhino. <laughs> it's for that reason that it's pretty rare to get to see a Hindu. Definitely some pretty brave wildebeest to be so near. These guys have the largest land migration over Africa, with millions of them crossing the savannah every single year. And in order to keep up during their migration season, the newborn wildebeest need to be up and running. Oh, the giraffes, of course, are looking to be between 18 and 20 feet tall. When they're born, they're already. There the baby is on the other side. This way, looks like there's a calf hanging out over here. Kind of between everybody else's legs. Yes. <laughs> Where'd you get off to? Other side of the log. Other side of the log, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, right there. Coming out. Oh my goodness. Nope. The oh. There she is. Hanging out with big sister for their coats, which look brown right now, but when light hits them just right, it turns more of a purplish color. Oh, found that crash of rhinos, here they come. Hello! Oh, they're on a mission. We're gonna go ahead and let them cross. There they go. Surprisingly fast animals. They get charged at speeds of up to 35 miles an hour. They're basically telling the they are out of the way, man. I was gonna say, those white rhinos are pretty hard to miss because they are. Camels twice the size of black rhinos, just around the same size of hippos, right around 5,000 pounds each. They're huge. Let's see. But like the black rhinos, white rhinos are also poached for their horns, which are very highly valued on the black market. Though despite conservationists oh. efforts to stop these poachers, they're very sophisticated and <laughs> very well financed. Yep, just relaxing, just looking back at us. Like, they're always hey, up. Come on over, we'll have dinner. Yeah, she's just oh, hanging out. Oh, down this way as well. <laughs> she's keeping their tusk exposed, them with some protection from predators. And even though they have those wings, they are thankfully flightless, which I think is a good thing, because I don't know about you all, uh, personally, they could be absolutely terrifying if an ostrich could fly. Oh, there come those zebra, too. <laughs> so they can go for up to nine months without taking a sip of water. They can get all the water they need from the food they eat, like plants and grasses. They have these specialized kidneys that allow them to lose the least amount of water possible when they urinate. And they really don't sweat very much to help them conserve water. They'll do this by raising their own body temperature to about 116 degrees. Once the temperature outside exceeds that is when they're going to start to sweat.